This has been long awaited. I know it was out there to like actually see online, but I wanted to wait until I hit friendship four to hear these. What does Arlecchino have to say about the rest of the cast? Uh, let's go through, let's go through all of them. I know that we have the Harbingers down here, but let's see what they have to say about Lenny too. Clairvy once asked me what a real home looks like, but I had no answer for her. How could any of us know the answer when the House of the Hearth is made up entirely of people who never had a place to call home? It's By true. killing Crucibina, I was able to assume the identity of father and rebuild the house under a new set of rules. Still, I'm well aware that even with these efforts, the house is far from that ideal. As for what a real home truly looks like, I suppose that question is best put to the side for now. Perhaps one day, Lenny will be able to give me a new answer. Hmm. Lenny is the next in line. He's really hyper focused on Lenny being the next the next one. But it's interesting because the last one was a female and Arlequino was too. I guess there's not really like you don't have to be a certain gender to be the leader of the House of Hearth. I don't know. But because Lenny would be the king, despite her having the identity of father, you know, Lynette? Lynette's uniquely calm personality is also her strength. And I believe she is more than clever enough to recognize that. She's an irreplaceable part of that little team of three. <laughs> and I would imagine that role brings her much joy. As her father, my duty is merely to give her the space to put those talents to good use. That is 100% correct. Fremine has a complex mind and often hides his emotions. He blames himself for things that aren't his doing and allows them to eat away at his conscience. He sure does. I would imagine the other children might find it difficult to understand his manner of thinking. But you seem to share a similar delicate sensibility. Perhaps you two would make good friends. Hmm. Oh. She understands her children. To a pretty good extent, too. I don't think she would know so much about their insecurities. Especially Femine. Because, I mean, he does... It's very blatant that he hides his emotions. But, I mean, sometimes they, they do pass on through. Hmm. I like, you know, despise Mother so bad that she wanted a real father to take place in the future. Yeah, actually. She probably doesn't have much to say about Nervalet, I don't think. Monsieur Nervalet intentionally maintains a certain distance. Wait, wait, wait. Monsieur Nervalet intentionally okay. maintains a certain distance in professional and private settings. Many say this makes him cold and unfeeling, but I believe the truth is just the opposite. In order for all beings to be treated equally under the law, a certain level of emotional distance is expected. Agreed. Maintaining that kind of indifference is in itself a demonstration of kindness. She has everybody down to the T, you know? Especially Nouvellet. Like, he most certainly does keep everything separate. I think he has his own line about that, too. About keeping work into work and his private stuff into private stuff. Which is natural to do, but for him, it's like night and day, you know? Some similarities, but mostly just night and day. All right, Marina. <laughs> I asked Linny to deliver an assortment of cakes for her theater troupe to enjoy during tea time. Oh. The children made the cakes themselves as a gesture to express the support and enthusiasm of her audience. I do hope she enjoys them. Okay. All right. I was trying to, you know, she was like, hey, 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 about that one time I was all, you know, dressed in black and I had a knife, you know, listen, I was just joking, all right? You didn't have the gnosis, thank God you didn't. So I let you be, you know, that was, it, it wasn't, it wasn't real. I was just playing. Now we are getting into 
the meat and potatoes, the things that we really, I mean, these are nice to hear too, but the things we really want to hear about these mysterious lineup of characters. We got, ooh, yeah, we got Saritza. Wow. Saritza, Jester, Captain, Doctor, Columbina, the Rooster, Marionette, and Pantalone, and Senora and Child. Woo! All right. Spoilers! When I was imprisoned, it was the Tsaritsa who pardoned me and gave me the title of Harbinger. Oh. I could sense she was a person of true sincerity and compassion, unlike all those pompous hypocrites with their posturing and rhetoric. Yet, it's difficult to say whether her compassion alone is enough to melt the ice and snow that permeates her land. All I can say is this. If we are forced to be at odds one day, I will raise my <laughs> weapon against her without hesitation. Because that is the greatest level of respect I am able to bestow. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, Dane was right. You know, the, lo the love is not there. It's like it's there, but it's not there. I don't, maybe I missed that in the in an animation, but yeah, the Saritza is the one that released her and gave her the title of Harbinger. I mean, it makes sense, but the way they showed it in the animation, I was thought I thought it was like the jester. Then it kind of goes back to the theory of there is no Saritza and the jester is actually the one in charge, which sounds really possible. Hmm. All right. She said, I will raise my weapon without without hesitation if the day comes where we have to the fight against her. Hmm. Just like that says the same thing about Arlequino. She would be sure to treat it. Yeah, yep, she does. Yeah, he does. I feel like she definitely has her reason, though, but... Because I don't really know much about the Saritza to give an opinion uh, on that on that matter. You would, like, if just reading this, you would think, like, oh, she let you free, you know, so you should probably repay her, but... We don't know about the Sarita. Exactly. Skara said she's a... Did, was she? Was he the one who said she's a sheep in wolf's clothing? Or was that... Um, Columbina? Sorry. I reinstalled my game, so these all say new. Trust me, I went through these already. <laughs> Everyone praises her for her kindness and benevolence. But they forget that love is also a form of sin. What if she's just trying to compensate for something? Hmm. Trying to cover, trying to like, you know, do something to, to cover up what she did. So, Skyra gives the impression that she did something terrible. Or not that she did, but what if she did? Like it's possible. A wolf in sheep's clothing. Yep. So. To exert a higher level of control over people, she puts on a graceful and cordial front. Most of those who have seen her true crazy <laughs> self have gone poof. No, they haven't. They, well, no, they haven't. He's right, Rooster. The Rooster holds little love for me, and the feeling is mutual. <laughs> he is an acceptable mayor, I suppose. Perhaps even an exceptional one. He has an uncanny ability to make great gains at a small price, which has earned him substantial acclaim throughout his political circles. However small the price may be, if it continues to come at the expense of my organization, sooner or later... Hmm. Sooner or later, that roost is about to be cooked. <laughs> that he's about to be cooked... Free Rooster. So Rooster seems to, you know, I think he has love for a lot of the Harbingers to a certain extent. As Child talked about how he took care of his uh, his brother and sister, or his uh, his sister Tonya and Tuser. Or like let he let Child go and see them or something like that. So, you know, there's like the front face love and respect, but, you know, behind the curtains, we don't know. Jester. As the original Harbinger, much about him remains a mystery. Ah. Upon our first meeting, he recognized my background with ease. Yet to this day, 
I know little about him. Well, Arlie, you, you kind of put on the show. You know, it wasn't so much of a secretive kind of thing she had going. Kind of just, you know, your your events were very out there. <laughs> you took out the last Harbinger. Yeah, so Rooster was great gains at a small price. So, Mr. Krabs, basically. No. <laughs> There's a comment that I read about Ali Kino didn't go to Leeway in her demo because Cloud Retainer. Oh, that's what a Leeway shows. <laughs> so she was like, oh, well, there's none there for me. I'll keep it moving. All right, so Jester is still a mystery for the most part. Don't know much about him. Capitano. He is very powerful, and that power comes with a high level of responsibility. However, I believe him to be someone worthy of respect, independent of the power he holds. Hmm, that's interesting coming from her. I just respect him as a person, you know? Forget the the formalities, just respect him as a person. But he ain't that high level of a power because I don't think he's level four. He's, he's not number four because all Lakino is. So that would put him... Kind of on the lower end of the the uh, the jesters, <laughs> the um, harbingers. What was it? I think ten is open. Ten is open, and technically the other two are taken. Technically, so hmm. the doctor. When I first took over the house of the hearth, he proposed a number of plans for us to work together. Yeah, that was he mentioned before. Me to send any rejects to him. He planned to experiment on them and then share the results with me. Ugh. I heard that he and the previous knave had quite the professional rapport in that regard. Rapport. All I can say is that if he weren't one of my fellow harbingers, I would have expedited their happy little reunion long ago. So that's a no. That's a full-on no. You will not have my children. Or have my children. You will not experiment on the good ones or the bad ones. Keep out. And if she was in charge or had any authority over uh, the last knave, she would have not have accepted it. Yeah, the doctor just creeps me out. In, in every facet. Cool character, cool writing. But, yeah, that just creeps me out. Deem slit? She is a very special harbinger. Pose her a question, and the answer you receive will be entirely unpredictable. If she sees fit to give a proper answer at all. Regardless, any answer you do receive is sure to be an interesting one. Okay. Not much info there, but very special harbinger. And unpredictable in terms of her answers to your questions. It's cool because like all we ever heard from her is her singing. We haven't actually really, really heard her like speak, speak. So I'm curious to see like what she means by that in the future. Very special harbinger. But also, if she even wants to talk to you at all, meaning if you're not of any importance or she has no care for you, you won't even get an answer. Uh, we did a rooster marionette. I have little interest in her. She's extremely passionate about her research and does not appear in public often. Scars are the same thing. In fact, many of our officers have yet to see her at all. Compared to, let's say, someone who would go so far as to create segments of themselves to better wander the across the land, I suppose you could say she is at the other end of the extreme. Let's say someone who would go as far to create segments of themselves that better wander across the land. She's the opposite of the extreme. So she would not want to explore the land. She would want to stay to herself and do her research. Hmm. Research on what? Like on all the mechs and stuff? That she has like the giant mech behind her? That's my only thing I can go off of is like what her research should be on. Tech, technology, robots, 
ancient technology, Conria technology. Because the Ruin Guard is a uh, Conria style thing. So, all right, we got Baiju. I won't deny that he is a capable and imaginative individual, but he lacks clarity. He can formulate grand plans and manipulate the economy with ease, <laughs> but at the same time, he allows his actions to be governed by the vengeance and hatred locked in the depths of his heart. Hmm. Rational people often believe themselves capable of controlling their emotions, but I believe that confidence is their greatest weakness. Yeah, she doesn't like Pantalone. I can tell. Not even just from this, but just the Winter Nights Lazo. Winter Nights Lazo. The way she described them. Like, you know, you businessmen and dignitaries, you wouldn't understand. You know? So I feel like she, yeah, since that's a shut in. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. She's not a fan of. I feel like businessmen in general, or like business or corporations or organizations besides her own. She can at least say, like, you know, he has a good head on his shoulders, at least. He's capable, imaginative, but he lacks clarity uh, and believes confidence is their greatest weakness. So, a banker, economical manipulation, <laughs> somehow, I don't know how that's going to work with him, but, hmm. He lets himself be controlled by the by his own heart. He lets his heart make his decisions, which probably gets him into a lot of trouble. So, well, let's talk with Pantalo and Postalina and Shesnaya. They will talk about politics, baking, government type of yapping. Yeah. I could be Shesnaya's whole thing, honestly. It could be just the, like a political patch. I could totally see that. The fair lady. She and Piero were the first harbingers I became acquainted with. Her prideful attitude when she first visited the House of the Hearth failed to earn her many friends among the children. Subsequent visits were accompanied by gifts, and the stately claim that those who dislike me shall receive none. The Ooh. children quickly learned how to play pretend, and she in turn basked in their attention, superficial though it may have been. I imagine she quite enjoyed being surrounded by children, Perhaps they due lied. to the persistent loneliness that plagued her, I found her sacrifice to be a great shame. May she be reunited with her lover in death. Oh. Hmm. Wish she had a nice sentimental note there at the end. But her M.O. was, if, you, if you're if you not nice to me or those who don't like me will not receive any of my gifts. So the children kind of took her upon that and acted like they appreciated her to get the gifts in return. And she fell for it. Um, and they are like, you know, think she enjoyed being one of the children. I don't know if that's necessarily true for her. I guess we'll never know, but <laughs> not anymore. And yeah, I just, Senora's whole thing kind of sucks. Cause she didn't, she didn't really belong here. She just wanted to be with her mate, you know? So that just kind of sucks all around. Hmm. I found her sacrifice to be such a great shame. So her and Pierre were the first ones that she actually met. Hmm. More management events than Nazania. Oh no, not no, not like that. Hopefully not. Ugh. Unless they have what I wanted. I always wanted a Hu Tao's second story quest, where for some reason we have to go to the border, and we get to like hang out not not hang out but like see and talk to the yakshas and senora and all the people that get so much attention and, and all these stories about them that we didn't get to like see or like uh what's his name from like the early on in the story leonard leonard yeah like that'd be a cool quest like a who it's a who tao second story quest we get to talk to a lot of the older enemy or er, enemies, older uh, characters who passed away. And last but not least, the best harbinger of them all. Objectively speaking, his personality is ill suited to that of a harbinger. He often tries to think the best of others and finds himself used by them as a result. <laughs> Dang. Of course, he is very talented. 
With what? time, I'm sure he'll come into his own. I see no need to judge him too early. Okay. I mean, be fair to child. That's what he wants to do. I mean, you, you, you can't blame him there. The man just wants to fight constantly and get stronger. So, that's fair, you know? This is what he's been trying to do forever. He's literally just been trying to get stronger in every which way possible. So, well, that's, that's a, a fun ride there. Learn a little bit about more about Senora. Um, definitely Pantalone, Marinette. Same as Scar, kind of. The ro Rooster a little bit more. She uh, not much about Columbina. He is very powerful. Not much about the captain. As when I or the jester. Um, but definitely learned a little bit more about Sarita. For sure. So yeah, that's, that's pretty good. I like those. But I guess we're looking at Capitano next. Which he still has yet to be revealed as his, his spot. So that'll be interesting. And then separately, we'll we'll have to go through the, the Rita lore separately. 